Hello there, and welcome to the Only Bible Channel, where I, Trey Murray, will guide you to be a better reflection of Jesus Christ. And today, I want to talk to you about how you can study the Bible like a pro as a beginner. So, we've got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. First of all, I want to talk to you about why it's important that you study the Bible. So many Christians get saved, then they come to church and don't know where to go from there. Well, life would be easier if we had an instruction book, right? Well, that's kind of what God gave us in the Bible. Of course, it is the history of God and His people. Of course, it is a book that tells us all about God's nature, but it's also a book full of history so that we can learn from other people's mistakes. It's a book of commands that can tell us what it is we need to do and what we don't need to do. Uh, it is also a book that helps us spiritually connect with our Creator and with Jesus, His Son, who is the bridge between us and that Creator. And it also tells us how we should be communing with the Holy Spirit. So a book that important really needs to be studied by each and every person who says they believe in it. We're gonna cover three things today. We're gonna to cover how you can choose the best Bible translation for you. Second, we're gonna cover how you can understand the structure of the Bible. And third, I'm gonna show you how you can practically apply what you learn in the Bible to your daily life. So first of all, let's talk about how you can choose the right Bible translation for you. Now it is important that you choose a translation that is faithful to the ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek text, while also being easy for you to understand. Now there are three main types of Bible translations out there. You have the formal translation, which is commonly referred to as the word-for-word -word translations. The most well-known formal translations are the American Standard Version, the English Standard Version, and the King James or New King James versions. So when you translate word for word, things kind of get lost in translation, so to speak. Uh, same thing goes when we translate modern languages, like from Spanish to English. If we were to do it in a word for word format, uh, we might translate things that don't make sense when you read out a full sentence or they're not in the proper order. And so it can be sometimes difficult to understand a word for word translation for some people. Now, if you have one of these translations and you use them, then good for you. They're again, not bad translations. They are excellent translations. So keep studying those. But if you don't have a Bible and you find these hard, don't worry. It's not bad if you go to a more dynamic translation. That brings me to the second of the three, which is dynamic translations, and those are commonly referred to as thought-for-thought -thought translations. Some common dynamic translations are the New International Version, the Common English Version, and the New Living Translations. Now, thought-for-thought -thought is a little bit easier to understand because you're translating a thought and not necessarily each individual word. So, where things kind of get lost in translation with your word-for-word, -word, in a thought-for-thought, that doesn't necessarily get lost, but you are losing some of the original intent that the authors may have had with some of the words in order to make it a little bit easier to understand. Now that's not to say that these are bad. They may be bad for a certain person. That person may not like those translations, but they still stay faithful to the text. It just takes a little bit more understanding of the original text to be able to come to what most people feel like is, is a accurate translation of those phrases. The last set we come to are the paraphrase Bibles, and I don't, I struggle to even call those Bibles. Um, what they are essentially are notes. Uh, you could call them a commentary on the Bible, but I would not call them a Bible itself. Uh, the message, uh, the passion, uh, the living word, these are paraphrased Bibles, and what they do is they, somebody takes and reads the text, whoever authors that version, uh, they'll read the text and then they'll write out what they think it says or something similar to what it says. And sometimes these go so far off base that that's why I struggle to call them Bibles. They aren't really Bibles. They're not holding to a word for word translation. They're not holding to a thought for thought translation. It's more like you're getting an extended Cliff Notes version of the Bible. And 
for that reason, I tend to tell people to stay away from those if you're gonna study the Bible, stay away from the message, stay away from any paraphrase Bibles, or if you're going to use them, don't exclusively use those. Um, but I would say that for any Bible study you undertake, when you first start, find what you like and read through it. But as you get deeper and deeper into the Word, go ahead, take two or three different uh, translations at the same time, read through them. Um, there are some great Bible apps out there that can help you with this. So I encourage you to use more than one translation when you do actually start a deep dive study in the Bible. Now, personally, you might ask what I use. I use the HCSB or the CSB, which is the Holman Christian Standard Bible or the Christian Standard Bible. And those to me are a good mixture between the word for word and thought for thought. Uh, it goes toward whatever's easier to understand. So it may lean a little bit more thought for thought at times, but at other times it leans a little bit more toward the word for word. And I find it really helpful because all of the scripture that uh, King James Version uh, believers will, or King James only believers will cite, is that they'll say, well, they left these verses out of other translations of the Bible. Well, the Holman Christian Standard did not leave those verses out. Um, and in fact, none of the versions left them out. They moved them to the footnote area, but Holman Christian left them in line, just like it is with the uh, King James. And they put it in brackets so that you understand that this verse is not found in earlier manuscripts. And um, there are some really good verses in there that aren't in the early manuscripts. So I think some of those are very beneficial and very good. Uh, however, I don't think it stands as a strong argument why people should only read the King James Version. If you want more information on that, I do have a video on this channel about King James Version only, and I encourage you to check it out. But wait till the end of this video. So I mentioned it before, here's some tips on how you choose the best Bible translation. I say go download an app to your phone, to your tablet, whatever device you use. Uh, the Bible app is a great one. You can switch through different translations. I also use the website biblegateway.com and it has some really good translations and at a glance you can you can look up a verse, you can see what it says in whatever translation you choose, and then go down and choose different translations. You can see how that verse changes. Um, there are also some features where you can look and see uh, all of the different versions of a verse at a glance, where you can just pull them all up on screen at the same time and just look through them. So I encourage you to do that, especially as you get deeper into Bible study. You'll be able to look at several of them all at the same time, but as you're trying to choose which one is the best for you, look and see which ones do you read that make sense to you and which ones are you looking at struggling going, I don't understand what that means. You might wanna stay away from the ones where you don't understand where it means and go with some of the others, at least until you get your footing about you. And then if you wanna to switch to a harder version, uh, something that's a little more word for word, then be my guest by all means. Absolutely, you should be searching both in a word for word and a thought for thought when you do these Bible studies. And one word of caution, absolutely stay away from any translation that is denomination specific. And really the only one I could research and come up with is the Jehovah's Witness has a Bible, it's called the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. And it is an absolute fallacy of a book, in my opinion. I feel like this book was written to uh, not as a faithful translation from the original text, but as a book to confirm the doctrines of the Jehovah's Witness Church. And so while I have absolutely nothing against uh, Jehovah's Witnesses personally, uh, scripturally, I have a lot of issue with the book that they believe in and some of the things they say, but I look to cover that in a future video. Right now, let's keep going. Just remember, stay away from that book if you are not a witness. And if you are a witness, then I encourage you to read one of these other scriptures uh, so that you can be better informed as the truth of God's word. Now guys, I'm gonna ask you if you've enjoyed this video so far, go down, nail that like button, and then leave me a comment. If you enjoyed something about this video or if you think I left something out, go down, leave me a comment below, and I try to respond to every single comment. So. If you do go down and you leave a comment, you can almost guarantee that I'm gonna leave you one back. Thank you guys so much, let's keep going. All right, next you need to understand the organization of the Bible. And the Bible is split up into two main parts. Most people know this. Uh, you have the Old Testament and then you have the New Testament. The Old Testament was written uh, 
with the Hebrew people, the Hebrew nation in mind, and the New Testament was written for both Hebrew and Gentile people. Uh, you have to understand that Christianity is at its core a Jewish religion. And so when you understand the history uh, behind your faith, then you can understand why the New Testament, why many of the commands in the New Testament exist. Uh, the Old Testament isn't old law like some people like to say, we throw the Old Testament out, we only follow the New Testament. That's not true. The New Testament explains the Old Testament. So you need both halves of this book to, for the Bible to make sense. So I encourage you, don't shun the Old Testament and only read the New Testament. Do yourself a favor, get into both of them. Now I'm going to explain a little bit more about the sections each of these testaments are divided into. So the first five books of the Bible are the first five books in the Old Testament. They're uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And for the most part, uh, beginning at the end of, of uh, Genesis through Exodus, you have Moses, which these are commonly referred to as the books of Moses. And um, this is a lot of the history of the beginning of Jewish religion or the Jewish faith. Uh, now it's true, you have some before that, you have the Adam and Eve story, the creation story, you have Abraham, Isaac, uh, Jacob, all of these, Joseph and the, the coat of many colors, all of these stories are found in Genesis. Uh, but really at the end of Genesis, you start really focusing in on Moses and how Moses brought the people from slavery in Egypt to the promised land that God gave him. The next section of books that runs from Joshua through Esther are the history books. And these books tell the history of the Hebrew people. And there is a lot in those books that are cautionary tales. Um, they are tales for us to understand what God uh, looks at as sinful and what he looks at as worship. And so we should look at the good and the bad stories there and learn from those, learn to apply those to our life. Now, it's true, most of us don't worship to false gods today, but you do worship your time to false gods. And modern false gods look a lot different. Uh, worship is anything that you give weight to. And so if you are spending time or money on something in this life that isn't God or his purpose, then you really want to look at that and check that out and see if you're giving that thing worship. For some people, it can be video games. For other people, it can be food. It could be drugs, alcohol. It could be um, spending money on big boats or cars or even just going to the mall and spending money for the sake of spending it. All of these things can be false idols that we worship today because we're giving our time and our money to those things. Then you have the wisdom and the poetry books and those run from Job through the Song of Songs or what's what sometimes called the Song of Solomon. Uh, and these are books that are poetic. They are full of wisdom. You have Ecclesiastes in there, one of my favorite books in the Bible. Uh, so much wisdom though in Psalms, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes that uh, really help in the day-to-day -day life. When we talk about applying those things to your life, those books are the ones that I choose to apply uh, not to the exclusion of everything else. Of course, you should definitely be applying everything in the New Testament to your everyday life. But those books especially are really good ones to hone in on in the Old Testament and to learn to um, use those, especially the wisdom that's found in, uh, in the Proverbs and especially the wisdom that's found in Ecclesiastes. Uh, Solomon was like the wisest person who's ever lived besides Jesus. And so you really want to look at what he has to teach you and apply that to your daily life. Then you have the major prophets. Those run from Isaiah to Daniel. And that's where you get a lot of the prophecy about Jesus. You get a lot of the prophecy about things that will occur in the end times. Um, yes, the end times are not just limited to the book of Revelation. You'll find some of that in Isaiah. You'll find some of that in Daniel. You will find many, many end time scriptures in the Old Testament because God wanted people to know he is the God of all time from beginning to end. So read through those. You should look through those and you should learn from those. Don't be afraid of end times and don't be afraid of end times prophecy. If you are a saved believer, if you are in Christ, none of what's there should really scare you because God is in control and God will not let any of his people suffer unnecessarily. 
Finally, you have the minor prophets from Hosea to Malachi, and here you see the, the Hebrew people mess up and come back to God, mess up, come back to God, mess up, come back to God. It's a recurring theme. And guess what? I'm not harping on Hebrew people because any of us do it. All of us do it even today. If you're a Christian and you say you've never messed up, I want to say that you just messed up because we cannot follow any of the Ten Commandments, especially not the additions that Jesus put on in the New Testament. And so if you think that everything's rosy and you're all okay with God because of what you do, then I really encourage you to go have a sit, have a sit down talk with your pastor, or your, your spiritual leader, uh, so that they can teach you all about sin and maybe walk you through Romans. But that's coming up. We'll get there in a second. All right. Most people know the first four books of the, the New Testament. You've got the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these are four t uh, accounts of people who say they walked with Jesus, they talked with Jesus, they lived everyday life with Jesus, and they bore witness to his death, burial, and resurrection. So these Gospels are the good news. That's what gospel means. But beyond that, they're also a testimony that as if they were in court and they were uh, attesting to Jesus being God, Jesus being the Son of God and Jesus being God. These four testaments are what they put out. It's their testimony. Well, not testimony as in old and new, but testament as in their testimony as to what they saw and what they believed. So these four Gospels are testaments, not Old and New Testament, but testimony of things that uh, they saw, things that they experienced while living with Christ for his, through his life, death, burial, and resurrection. Um, so I encourage you, definitely read those. If you're a Christian and you haven't read the four Gospels, you really need to read those. In fact, that's where I would start because that is the basis for your faith. Then you have the church history book. It's just one book, it's Acts, and it talks about the beginning of the church through uh, when the church started branching out and started spreading all throughout the known world, all throughout the Roman Empire at the time. So it's a very good book, very short, uh, not short as in length, but short as in it, it's that section of the Bible doesn't have many, many books to it. Then you got Paul's letters, and letters are also called epistles, so don't let that word confuse you. These are Paul's letters to the church, specifically. And that goes from Romans to 2 Thessalonians. You know, Paul gathered around. He went to very different, or to many different churches, and he spoke to many different people. And he actually helped start many of these churches. And so he felt like he was a father figure to these, these believers in these churches. And he wrote letters back to them, telling them how they should be conducting business, um, how they should be structuring their church, uh, all these different things you find in these letters and even though they're letters to a church body uh, Each of us can get something very unique and very special out of these letters. They are amazing letters Especially the letter of the Romans. Romans is especially important because it Actually speaks to the whole Bible. It gives you everything you need to be saved right there in that one book and it goes into a lot of history of the, of the Hebrew people, and it goes into a lot of the explanations as to how Gentiles are now brought into that Hebrew faith. So I definitely recommend checking out Romans. Apart from the four Gospels, I think Romans is the next best book to jump into. Then you got Paul's letters to his friends, his epistles to his friends, and that goes from 1 Timothy through Philemon. I encourage you to read those because they talk about the personal relationship Paul had with these people and that's what we should be having with other believers. And especially Timothy, who he bears his heart to, he felt like Timothy was a son to him and he wanted to impart all the wisdom and knowledge he had amassed during his life. So Timothy is really important for believers to read because I think it guides us very well in how we should be doing in life. And then you got the other letters, those run from Hebrews through Revelation. Uh, those are especially good as well. They're written by other authors. That's why there are other letters. Uh, Paul wrote the majority of the letters in the Old Testament, but you also have letters written by Peter and by John and by Jude, other authors. And so, but they also provide a whole lot more spiritual doctrine and supporting doctrine that supports Paul's writings. I really think the New Testament is where you begin and you start to understand how the Old Testament fits in when you get a good grasp and understanding of the New Testament. So as I explained, the full Bible is excellent reading. 
It is the full revelation of God. When God reveals himself to his people, he doesn't do it in the Old Testament and he doesn't do it in the New Testament. He does it all throughout the book. So it's not relegated to one or the other. It's not like you must read this, but you don't have to read these things. Cover to cover, excellent book to read, excellent for every Christian to read. It's, it is a very good, it's a life lesson book. It's a history book. It's a, it's good reading at certain points. But when you get into the Bible and you realize that there's murder, there's, there's intrigue, there's political aspirations, there's all of these things going on that still happen today, then you realize that this book is absolutely written for all time and for all people, for everyone everywhere. And when you read the Bible cover to cover, you realize that salvation was God's plan from Genesis all the way through Revelation. It's not something he cooked up between the Old and New Testaments. It's not something that might fly off the, the cuff. And he goes, well, I'll just send my son to die for these people. That was always the plan. And you realize that when you see Abraham take his son Isaac out and was going to kill him. God said to kill him and was stopped at the last second because God is merciful and graceful. But you see that he was meant to do that because he was foreshadowing his own son coming to die on the cross for our sins. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All right, so here's some tips on how you can start studying the Bible. And the first one is when you sat down and you figured out which translation of the Bible you wanted to use, well, now you need to go out, you need to buy yourself a good study Bible in that translation. Uh, they have maps, they have different notes, they have everything you need so that you can be able to study the Bible in a more effective manner. And I use two. I actually have an NIV study Bible. I also have the HCSB, which I mentioned earlier, the Holman Christian Standard. That's my go-to. And uh, I use an apologetic study Bible for that, which has a lot of good footnotes and a lot of good notes in it, a lot of good articles. So I recommend you go out and you find you a good study Bible. Second, there's something out there called word mapping Bibles. And those are really good because those give you a kind of a place where you can start and start mapping the same words throughout the Bible. Uh, when you realize that the same word used for angel is different in Old Testament versus New Testament because of the Greek versus the Hebrew, then you realize kind of uh, like angel may not always be what we think of as angels. It may just be a person who is a messenger of God. So angels, uh, things of that nature, uh, disciples, uh, there were the 12 disciples, but there were also other disciples. Disciples just a follower of. Um, so those types of words you start understanding when you use a word mapping Bible that, you know, not everything is always exactly the same. And so you just kind of have to read through the text and read the context. That is a very good advice for anybody that's studying the Bible. Don't take one verse or one word, read the context, understand what the passage is trying to say. Now, there's also some online software and I'm gonna put some links down in the description. You got the Logos app, which I am a ambassador for Logos. Uh, and I'll leave my link down below. If you do buy from them, then I do receive some credit for that, but you, they've got free resources too. It's a great app, it's great resources. I use the Logos PC version of the app which helps me to go through the text. And when you click on a word, you actually get to pull up and see where the original word form was and where else it's referenced in the Bible. So I really encourage you to go out, use the Logos app. Uh, you can get them on your phone, on your tablet, you can get it on your computer. Uh, but I also use the Bible app and that's on the tablet and on the phone. And that's a very good app. It's put out by Life Church TV. It literally, if you type in Bible app in the, uh, the app store or in the Android store, you'll, it'll pop up. So it's a really good app. It has some really good stuff in it. You can, it's got prayer time where you can put prayers down. It's got all different kinds of things you can use. Um, but it, it's a good study tool. I just feel like Logos is a little bit better study tool because it, while it has all the prayer and everything in it, it's also got an area for notes. It's got an area for you to cross-reference things. It is just a superior app all the way around. Uh, but as all things, it may be too many dials, too many bells and whistles for a beginner. So 
Uh, that's why I'm also throwing in the Bible app, which is a very good starting place if you're starting to study the Bible and all you have is your phone or your tablet. So I also want to tell you about applying what you learn in the Bible to your everyday life. You know, the teachings in the Bible are so important that we should be taking what we learn from it and putting it to use in our day-to-day -day lives. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. James 1, 22. Now, how do we apply the teachings of what we learn in everyday life? Well, in the historical passages, we want to be very careful because not everything people did historically was good. You want to read the passage and you want to find out were they rewarded by God or were they punished by God? And so in the moments where people were rewarded for what they did, then we probably need to sit down and look at applying what they did in our everyday lives. But if they were not rewarded, uh, such as uh, you have Jonah, who at the end, even though he did what God told him to do, he got angry with God and he went and he stormed off and God pulled, put shade over him and then took it away, you realize that he probably wasn't doing what God wanted him to do. And then you realize that uh, other people, Gideon, Gideon did great for people. He liberated his people from the Midianites. Uh, but then he went and made a gold ephod, and, and, which is a vest, and hung it up on a stake and everybody came by worshiping it. And Well, there you go, building false idols. So there are some things we just want to learn from and not do and some things we want to learn from and do, but you need, really need to learn how to discern between those two. Then you have the genealogical passages and that's everybody's favorite. We all moan when we have to read all the hard names and we have to go through the really long list of genealogical uh, stuff. But what you have to understand is those are there for a reason and what they're there for is to show you that God used ordinary and everyday people throughout the Bible to carry out his mission. He didn't find the most extraordinary. He didn't find the biggest, the strongest, the most beautiful. Uh, he didn't do these things. Instead, he focused himself on finding sometimes the weakest, sometimes the smallest, sometimes the least known, so that his power could be magnified. And so through those genealogical passages, we realize the nature of God that he wants all of the, all of the glory. And so when we think we did something great and we want to take glory and honor for it, you have to realize, stop and humble yourself and go, you know what? That's not my glory, that's God's glory. And then you got commands, and commands are things that God tells you to do or not to do, and those things are pretty self-explanatory. If God tells you to do something, you should be doing it. If God tells you not to do something, then you should not be doing that. So that's very self-explanatory. I don't really need to go into a lot more discussion on it. If God says do it, do it. If God says don't do it, don't do it. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed. You know those who taught you, and you know that from childhood you have known the sacred scriptures, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 15. So here's some tips on how you can apply biblical principles to your everyday life. The first thing you should do is ask yourself, how can I apply what I just read to my daily life? Asking yourself that kind of opens you up to understanding what the passage is trying to teach you and what you can glean from it, what you can take and use in your everyday life. Second, you need to schedule time that you can spend with God. And when I say with God, I mean away from everyone else, just alone time, you and God. Jesus would do this quite often. Every morning he would wake up and he would go pray. He didn't stay with the other disciples. He would get up, he would go off to a place where he was by himself and he would pray to the Father. And we should be modeling that as well. When we get into corporate worship, all of those things are great. And if you're in corporate prayer, it's a great time. But you don't tend to get very personal with God when you're in those, those large groups. So if you wanna get away and you wanna get personal with God, then what you need to do is remove yourself from that group so that you and God can spend some alone time together. You know, we do this as humans as well when we have daddy-daughter time or mommy-son time where we just get away with one of our children. Or we may have mommy-daddy time where they go away and you get a sitter. Uh, and it grows that intimate relationship between those people. So what you should be doing is getting intimate with God, getting close to Him, being raw with Him, telling Him your emotions, telling Him what you feel, telling Him what you think, uh, and then you get closer with God, and that's what God wants is a relationship with you. 
Third thing you should be doing is you should be memorizing scripture. Uh, don't wait until you need it to memorize it, right? You should have those things in your mind, queued up, ready to go. When Jesus was in the desert and he was being tempted by Satan and Satan was throwing scripture at him, Jesus is saying, man, you're twisting that scripture. Let me tell you what it really says. And we should be doing the same thing. When people come to us with scripture, when Satan comes and attacks us with scripture, we need to be ready, have it loaded to go, hey, look, you're using that in the wrong way. You're not really speaking the truth on that. Let me explain to you what the truth really is. You should also take a deep breath. Seriously, when you're in the middle of a situation and things are going so hot and heavy and fast and you're just flustered and you don't know what to do or what to think or what to say, stop. Take a deep breath. It's okay. Most things you don't have to answer immediately. And it's not required for you to pop off an answer every time somebody says something to you, especially when you're angry. So stop and take a deep breath. Remember those scriptures you've memorized and then let the peace of God take over your body. And you should be journaling your thoughts. Every day when you pray, keep a prayer journal. When you study, keep a journal. When you go to church, take some notes, keep a journal. Tell what you think about the, the pastor's message. You should always be journaling. Why? Because when you look inside of yourself, that's when your growth starts to come. When you learn all of this stuff, if you don't take and apply it to your life, you really haven't learned anything. So what I'm telling you to do now is when you journal, that you are forced to sit down and think about what it is you're taking in so that you can apply those things to your life. And you will see progress as you journal. Uh, I encourage you to go back and look at your old journals when you've done this for a while and see how you've grown from when you first started journaling. These are very positive things for you to do and I neglect them too often. I encourage you, please go journal. So what did we cover today? We covered choosing the right Bible translation, learning the structure of the Bible, and then learning how to apply the teachings of the Bible to your life. Now I encourage you, go out, find yourself a group of people, and start studying the Bible with them and then find yourself some alone time where you can study and get deep into God's Word on your own because that's what this is all about. When you start getting into Bible study, uh, apart from the corporate, when you start doing it by yourself, then you start to get that growth and you start to understand things in the Bible so that when you are in that corporate Bible study, you have something you can contribute to that Bible study and believe it or not, I didn't start out as a teacher. I wasn't always raised in the church, but it was my study, my studiousness in the Bible that put me in a position to where now in the church that I'm in, I am actually sought out by some of the elders to give them advice as to biblical things. And I'm not bragging on that, just saying it took a lot of work and a lot of research and a lot of study that got me to that point. You can get to that point too. What you need to do though is you need to sit down, you need to apply these principles to your life and you need to learn and study the Word of God. Now remember I'll have several resources linked down in the description below so if you'll go down there and you'll look at those, there's several links you can click on, you can find more information, you can figure out how you can start studying the Bible on your own. Heavenly Father, today I ask that you would touch each and every person who has watched this video, that you will make Bible study very important for them, that you will make it an, an integral part of their life, Lord, that they would be able to, to sew it into the fabric of their being. Father, I just pray for this person watching right now that you would reach down, you would touch their heart, and you would draw them close to you, Father. It's in Jesus' name I pray these things. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you would, go down, give me a like. Let me know that you like this video. Let YouTube know that you like this video and share it with your friends. Also, if you would, comment below. Let me know, did you like this video? Was there something about it that I missed? Let me know, create this community, and that way we can get to know one another. If you just want me to pray for you, I, I beg you, go down, give me a comment. You have a very high likelihood of getting a response if you do leave a comment and you have almost zero if you don't leave a comment. So do me that favor. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. God bless.